Toughness, accountability, loyalty. I think um, I think you got to have something that you stand for. Um, these guys came to us um, early in the fall, and and these older guys, and, and really um, wanted to put a stamp on, on what this program means to them, and then what they want to do. And um, that was what they came up with. Is something relatively easy they can define, and and also what they can remember. I think in programs you get caught up picking and grabbing from so many different areas but this this is pretty definitive um, and, and it's 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 awesome and uh, it's just something they live live by off the field um, and on the field Tyler kind of mentioned that fire that continued to burn from last last season a lot of things achieved but also things left to be achieved did that continue to burn for you does it feel good to be out here again and knowing that this next chance is upon you yeah, I mean, I think as a coach, I don't think you ever go into shutdown mode. You know, it's it's the next day or really the next day for us was already getting into 2022 season on the bus and, and making phone calls and deciding where we're going to go recruit. And that's kind of the same um, going through the fall. And every day for us, we try to do the best we can. Every day for us is is, is a regional atmosphere in terms of, of practices. And um, I think you have to train that way. So when you get to the games, they're not – they're not any bigger than, than what you've already done. Um, they're just, just another part of the day. And if we can do that and, and be really intentional with, with our time and, and what we're doing, then, then I think the games, will they are what they are at the end of the day. How important will it be just to capitalize on some of these non-conference games early, you know, to not have to put the pressure on, hey, if we, we have to win the Mountain West tournament to try and get that NCAA regional game? Yeah, I mean, I think any any time you, you you get into that half to mindset, I think that I think that's that weighs heavy on these guys. And um, I think I think for us in the non-conference schedule, obviously, I'm not chasing wins. Um, I've stated that just about every day, every year. I don't I don't believe in it. Um, I believe in in putting our guys against the best, and and that's what we're doing again this year. And and. Whether we win or lose, um, it, it's gonna it's gonna build something for us down the road. Um, but these guys are ready for this non-conference schedule. I think it's arguably the toughest one since I've been here, um, and, and they're ready. And that's that's something they deserve. And I'm looking forward to sitting back and watching them play and, and see what happens. How does that just continue the testament of what you're trying to grow here? You know, you've always mm -hmm. said, you know we want people to play us, and mm -hmm. you know these guys know they can play with anyone on any given day. Yeah, I mean, I, th I think they've proved that over time. I think if we can just get a little bit more consistent, uh, but I think that goes back to practice and how intentional you are during the day. I don't think it's ever about that one game, um, but I think it's trying to avoid the ups and downs during the course of the year. But if we can practice right and be intentional and stand tall every day during practice and during your off days and um, off the field, then I think it just it's a it's a direct correlation in the games. Um, and, and we can play with anybody, and people do get a chance to play Nevada. Um, so I'm looking forward to, to how they react. This is a really old group. Um, it's probably as old as I've had here, uh, minus maybe my first year. Um, so it, it, I think for them, um, just just to put the focus on being really good at what they what they can control instead of trying to focus on what they can't control, um, that that will be a key I think for us going through the year. Coach, what did you take from that regional appearance, and what do you hope your guys took from it as well? Yeah, I mean, I think it was. I think obviously it's anytime. You know, you talk about half twos and, and you talk about weighing heavy. I think anytime you get into the regionals uh, for the first time in, in this program over two decades or two decades, uh, I think it was good to be here. And I think that's what our guys, our guys were just happy to get there. And I think, so that was probably the disappointing part. I don't, I don't necessarily fault them for that because they've never been there. You know, they, they don't they didn't really know what to expect. As much as you try to plan, um, it is a little different. Um, but I think now knowing what what it takes to get there, knowing what it's like to be one of the last 64 teams to play, I think I think the goal that the goal now is to, is to win games in June and get on into a super and then get on into Omaha. You know, that's um, it's not just the goal to get there. Um, this staff is well equipped with coaches that have been to the postseason. Um, now this program is well equipped with players that have been in the postseason. So I think it's a great combination. Um, and they know what it takes to get there. So there again, we have the best seat in the house.
And you mentioned earlier, you know, you got a lot of experience on this mm -hmm. team, especially now with the grad transfer coming in from UCLA. Yep. Uh, what do you see out of Mr. Caulfield, and what do you expect from him this season? Man, Pat's been Pat's been a blessing to have for sure. You know, um, he's he's a fiery, uh, disciplined, intentional. You talk about intentional, uh, intentional human being, and and uh, that's him as a person, and it, 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 it bleeds over to the field. Um, you know, obviously adding the experience uh, of playing with John. Um, you know, we kind of speak the same language, which is. That's that's always trying to the niche when you get a grad transfer or JC guy is trying to to find the language and a common ground. Uh, my time with John um, is second nature for him in terms of what we're doing here and the, and what's being taught. So he's fit right in. Um, he's taking on a leadership role just just as if he's been here for four years uh, with these other guys. Who are some of the other? transfers from junior college that you hope that'll make an impact right away or some of the younger guys too? Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, Josh Romero, um, obviously there's, there's a little bit of history um, with the program with, with JoJo being, having played here. Um, Josh is obviously really familiar with Nevada baseball. Um, not so much, doesn't have the familiarity with my system, but um, I think that's somebody that, that everybody needs to pay attention to. I think Cam Jawisis is another one. They come from the same JC. Uh, with the with the void at first base, without Dylan here for the first time in four years, uh, you know Cam's going to play an integral role in that. I think another right-handed pitcher, Jake Beasterfield, um, who's who's somebody that you're going to see pitch significant innings, whether it's in a starting role or out of the bullpen in some way. I think I think that's somebody that you're going to you're going to see throw quite a bit of innings for us. Cam mentioned a little bit the depth pitching, just but. How do you hope, you know, that this group, they have to still find kind of their rhythm. You still are yep. trying to find your one, two, three guys for the weekend. Yeah, I think that's probably the downside of starting a conference in the third week of the year is you don't really, you know, you're trying to still trying to find and piece together and trying to find your way. Um, but, hey, it is what it is. And we're, we'll, that's why, you know, we've inter-squatted up until next, we open up on the 18th. I think we would have inter-squatted over 30 times. Um, from the fall and the spring. So if we can't piece together something from those 30 times, then we should probably find other jobs. Um, but, you know, it'll still take some time, too, when the lights goes on. There's always a little bit of a different. It's different. You know, when the lights turn on, it's always a little bit different. Um, I think we've got the right pieces in place, um, and we got the best pitching coach in the country. So uh, going forward with that, I, I'm, I'm staying right behind Buck and our pitching staff, and, and what they're what they're going to do this year. What happens from now until you guys take off to start the second? Yeah, you know, we'll we'll get into some game prep a little bit this week, and then uh, we'll enter squad. We'll get our final tune up Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and try to mimic as best we can um, opening night and the opening weekend. And then next week ends up becoming a, a typical game week. We'll take Monday off. Uh, we're going to do it Tuesday, Thursday, or Tuesday, Wednesday, and then we'll fly out to GCU and. First 11 days on the road, so uh, we'll, we'll, it'll be it'll be kind of business as usual for us. Is that a, is that a way you like to start a season to kind of just get these guys away from their kind of normal routine and, and get comfortable with each other? Again? Yeah, I think I think it's I think it's vital in all honesty. I think um, you know at home there's distractions and that's part of being really good at what whatever you're doing. Your career is managing distractions, and on the road there's no distractions. Um, uh, so I, I think anytime you can do that um, and get on the road and get everybody in there for 11 days and it's just uh, it's just us it's 40 guys uh, it's our trainer it's um, our coaching staff it's players and, and we get a chance to find out what we all all are about because it's it is adversity traveling on the road it's not comfortable um, and that's when I think you find out who people really are how important will it be just to have you know Tyler Mario Joshua mm -hmm. just your return or some of your big leaders of this team just continue to lead and set the example. Yeah, I mean, any anytime you go in, you know, you, you go into a season, um, you want to be experienced. And we do have that. I think the one thing for those guys, is, and we've mentioned it, is to watch out for is, you know, you can't, you can't just sit back and live off the past. I mean, those guys have had great careers. You know, you mentioned Zamora, who's, who's had a storied career, really, for his time here. Um, but that doesn't mean anything today, and that's you're only as good as you were today, really. And that's been the message to those guys. Um, they got to stay hungry. Um, 
and they got to be really good at what they can control and they can control today and they can control how they go about it and that's that's the biggest message for those guys if they're going to live off of the past then it's not going to be a very good year plain and simple really quick you had mentioned never really turning this thing off but just to actually be back out here to have the season yep. on the precipice of it and have the sunshine of it, I mean, is it kind of like uh, the first time every time when this year <laughs> time of year comes around yeah i th i think i don't you know for a coach I don't know. I, I don't know if, like I said, I don't know if I ever get to that moment where like it's it's opening night. Um, I think you just try to be super intentional on in what you're doing that day. And I think, but I think the other side is, I think with that comes burnout too. And I think as coaches, uh, we're experienced enough to get away from it um, and know when to get away. Um, I think that's what we preach to these guys too. As hard as we go and as demanding as this program is, you got to work on checking out just like you do on checking in. And I think that's probably more the key um, than to treat everything like opening day. Um, you know, we got a job to do, and the other opponent doesn't care if you're hurt or not feeling good or if you're tired, and that's the bottom line, and we have to treat it that way. Um, and so that's, that's how we try to do it. But then there again, we also work on trying to get away as best we can as well, too, when, when the time calls for it.